Well, how random is random? Uh, well, let's put it like this. I was, in, I was in a pub in Charlotte Street, of all places, in Soho, and a mate of mine had read Nova Express. This was 64, 65. Was talking about this. You must buy this book and started to try and explain to me his interpretation of cut up and fold in techniques, which he probably got wrong. And I couldn't remember the name of the book when I got outside, and then an Express Dairy van from the Express Dairies came by, and I thought, oh, Express, Nova Express. And I thought, that's what he's trying to tell us. Random events can have a hidden meaning. We can get messages. But I don't, don't think that's what you see in it, is it? Oh, exactly. Oh, is exactly it? what I see in it. It's though a point that uh, these juxtapositions between once you're thinking, if you're walking down the street, and once you see, that was exactly uh, what I was uh, introducing. You see, life is a cut-up. Every time you walk down the street or look out the window, your consciousness is cut by random uh, factors, and then you begin to realize that they're not so random, that this is saying something to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you someone who believes, you know, rather like um, Arthur Kersler, you know, the idea of coincidence almost revealing a web of reality? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. There's no such thing as coincidence. But when you'd actually done, on a literary level, you'd reassembled your own work, other people's work and so on, surely then you select. Oh, absolutely. It's not just so random that you say, there are a hundred pages, publish. You... Oh, oh, absolutely, no. That's, uh, you're trying to um, sell raw material instead of a finished product. Mm -hmm. As I may make a... A cut up. I don't do it too often anymore. No. And out of uh, ten pages, use a sentence. So you simply wait until coincidence gives you something artistically good in your Absolutely. terms. Absolutely. I see. So you use coincidence not just to be random, but as a tool of the art. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I see. Yes. I see. Yeah. You mentioned T. S. Eliot earlier because he had a similar background to you in a sense. Um, you once said the wasteland was the first cut-up. You didn't mean that literally, that he cut it up, but do you mean it read as if it was a cut-up? It, uh, it read as if it was a cut-up. Now, he taking um, a little bit here and a little bit here from this, uh, all kinds of different uh, sources, and assembled them into a sort of a montage or a tapestry. Mm. Uh, of course, they were very carefully selected. Mm. But there was that element of that was what gave it this element of surprise. Yes. Because when you were at Harvard, you did your uh, English literature degree, yes. didn't you, uh, 36? Wasn't Eliot there um, lecturing, wasn't he? He Precisely. was. He was, yes. He gave a seminar. I didn't attend it. <laughs> well, I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't into writing at that time at all. See, I didn't write anything until I was 35. Mm. Not quite. I, there was some... Um, uh, efforts uh, prior to that. Uh, but I didn't hear him lecture. You didn't? I did hear oh, him lecture, yes. He's a very good speaker. Yes. Very good speaker, indeed. But you, obviously, you admire the work. Oh, yes. The Wasteland. Very much. But is it not so much... Uh, one thing, it looks a little bit like a cut-off. But another thing about it is that it's got this kind of decadent city feel, the decline of our civilization almost. Is that what attracts you as well? No, partly, but it's, um, I don't know, I find myself using quotations from Eliot uh, in my work mm. all the time, like that um, uh, a piece that I read sometimes on the uh, nuclear uh, situation. Hurry up, please, it's time. Hurry up, please, it's time. Dead Kennedy songs, uh, the, the B-side of our first single was The Man with the Dogs. The song itself, the lyrics were just not coming together. I couldn't figure out how I wanted to tell the story or what belonged where, and it was just kind of a big mess. And so I finally threw up my hands and figured, what have I got to lose? I'm going to try the Burroughs method. I'm going to cut up every single line of this song and move it around until I get something I like. And sure enough, it worked. <laughs> 
some of the uh, examples of this, sometimes when I realize I'm going to do this in advance, the rough drafts sometimes have to be kept in plastic bags and come out more like this. This is uh, Vulcanus 2000 from a later lard project.